It's easily one of the more neglected stories right now. The Indian government plans on hosting a series of G20 meetings in the disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The G20 is currently led by India and the meetings in Kashmir are one of several hosted by Delhi. So between May 22nd to May 24th, around 100 international delegates from member countries are expected to arrive in Srinagar, where they will have a series of strategic meetings related to tourism. Not so surprisingly, they will also be given a grand tour of the beautiful landscape of, of the region, going on Shikara rides in the Dal Lake and on gondolas in the mountains of Gulmarg. International human rights activists and Kashmiris are naturally outraged, and understandably so. You see, by hosting the G20 meeting in Kashmir, India will be seeking international normalization of its occupation and settler colonial project that has only accelerated since 2019. Why is this significant? In August 2019, Narendra Modi's government revoked Article 370 that ended Kashmir's semi-autonomous status as well as Article 35A that had protected land in Kashmir from being bought up by Indians. Since then, the Indian government has passed a number of laws that not only facilitates the transfer of land to Indians, including the army, but also welcomes Indians as residents into the region. Kashmiris say that this is India's effort to implement demographic change in the region, to turn the Muslim majority into a minority and thus force an end to the call for freedom or self-determination. Since 2019, the Modi government has effectively dismantled civil society and criminalized activism in Kashmir. Many journalists, academics, human rights activists are either in jail or have been placed on no-fly lists. Others are routinely harassed or called in for questioning. What is particularly remarkable about this story is that even as these representatives from the G20 countries will be going to Kashmir and given a grand tour by the Indian government, Foreign journalists, human rights activists, uh, even the UN have not been allowed entry into Kashmir for several years. Even in preparation for the G20, there are reports of hundreds of arrests, especially of young people. India wants to make sure that anyone who might want to protest will have absolutely no chance. In addition, India is planning to beautify its occupation by removing heavy signs of militarization from the roads that the G20 representatives will be taking. And they're also painting bunkers and other military installments and turning them into smart bunkers. The idea here is to show Kashmir as being normal and Kashmiris as being content and thriving under India. So this is clearly an attempt to create a particular experience for those G20 representatives traveling to Kashmir. Already, for decades, India has used tourism to Kashmir to normalize its occupation for Indian audiences. Now, with this meeting, India is attempting to do the same for an international audience. Ahead of this meeting, the Special Rapporteur on Minority Affairs released a statement saying that the G20, which accounts for two-thirds of the world's population and 80% of world trade, cannot ignore the human rights violations taking place in Kashmir. In other words, to go to Kashmir and to partake in the sham wouldn't just amount to erasing the rights of Kashmiris, it would mean helping India lie to the entire world.